morning open door welcome to another amazing service december is here we're heading closer and closer for christmas those of us joining us online please come let us stand let us worship the lord this morning joy to the world the lord is come let us receive a king let us sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature Love and the wonders of his 
introduce you a new song. Hope you guys enjoy it. With all my foes, I bow before your throne. And your words are true. Your words I am loved. With all my wrong. I'm loved, and I believe that I'm loved, that I'm healed and set free. And I believe, I believe in you. And I believe that I'm loved, that I'm healed and set free. And I believe, I believe. I fall into my knees and your words are true, your words I'm healed with all my hurt, but from my broken heart and your words are true, your words I'm healed and I believe that I'm loved.
spoke a word you were singing over me you were been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you were been so so spoke a word you were singing over me you were been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you were been so so kind
shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me Holy worship, come on! There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me of your own salvation story he left 99 of his best and he came running after you think about that day when you said Lord I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life it's like he single-handedly singled you out and said I'm calling you I'm longing for you I love you so much and I'm chasing after you that I'll break down every barrier every wall every lie every deceit the enemy is placed inside you that makes you believe that you do not belong to this family I have chased up to you Lord come on to where you are holy overwhelming love
such amazing love, such amazing grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You, Lord. So we are standing this morning. Let's take a moment as the band's playing in the background. Just think of that lamb that went to the cross. Innocent lamb, Jesus. The lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. The lamb that was slain for my sins and for yours. He was sent into this world as a baby born in a manger. That star that was above him to point the way to the world. The light that came into the darkness. All the way to the cross for you and for me. Even as we're worshiping this morning, I believe God is healing people in this place. I believe through this song, God is touching people. I believe this morning as we sing this, to be reminded of how much God loves you, how much He cares for you, that He would send His only begotten Son, Jesus. His only Son, Jesus, for the Father loved the world so much. I believe this morning that the love of God is going to flood this place. And those hearts that are crying out, maybe you're a bit lonely, desperate, maybe you're struggling with some things in your mind, in your head. Maybe there's some things that are coming against you in your family. Maybe there's some t obstacles in your life that you haven't overcome yet. Jesus is there for you. He has come to set you free. He has come to heal. He has come to deliver. He has come into this world as the Savior washing you, cleansing you of all unrighteousness, every sickness, every depression. Even this morning, if you're struggling with depression, may it lift off you this morning as you worship Him in this song that says, He will kick down every wall. He will light up the darkness. He will climb every hill. He climbed that hill called Golgotha. He went to the cross. He paid the full price. He didn't only stay on the cross, but on the third day He was raised from the dead. And victory is in His hands. And He is the Savior of the world. He is the light that has come into the darkness and has overcome. And you will never walk in darkness again if you walk in this light. Let's worship Him this morning as the scales begin to fall off, as the chains begin to fall off, as your healing begins. I won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't. Voices and all the evil may never end. Come on, just lift up your voice. Reckless love of God, no, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. No, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Oh, oh freedom in this place, Lord. He's overwhelming love. Won't you greet someone around you with his love this morning in the name of Jesus. Give him a handshake, give him a hug.
a, what a good service to come together this morning. I see uh, we fill up right to the back these days against the walls there, Jean. You're keeping the fort there. Someone switched me off. Sound man. <laughs> That's okay. I can shout above that. God is good. Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house this morning? Always good to come together. Welcome to the Open Door Church. If you're here for the first time, relax, sit back, enjoy the service with us. You have no obligation for you to give this morning or anything like that. We would love for you to receive all that God has for you. Amen. Have you come to receive all that God has for you this morning? I've come to receive all that Christ has done for me. We're going into our new theme for Christmas, for December, the light of Christmas. The light of Christmas. And we're going to talk about that next Sunday. Pastor Devil is going to be ministering on his birthday. Amen. Come on. Getting older. He's moving into the 40s. Huh? No. They say the naughty 40s. I don't know about that. Eh? They say life begins at 40. Is it true? Some people say, no. Nah. Started at 21 already. Huh? <laughs> Amen. You are now entering the mission field. When you slip out the back door, you are now entering... The mission field. When you go out that door, there's the sign there. You can see it there. You are now entering the mission fields. Amen. And it's open. It's ripe for harvesting. Listen to what it says. As the missionary spirit is but one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The missionary spirit. The spirit that tells you that it's not about you, but it's about people that are unsaved. It's the story to be told to people. That's when the lights come on in someone's life and they come to salvation. They realize suddenly why these Christians are so happy. They weren't on something. They were on Holy Spirit, Jesus juice. Amen. That's why we call the happy clappies. We can't help it. We get so excited about Jesus because the Spirit lives inside of us. Amen. When you sing a song like this morning, what happens in your heart when you say, He left the 99. And he came for me, the one lost sheep. He left the 99 behind because they are fine. They're sitting in church. He will go fine. That's Jesus' heart. That's the missionary heart this morning. You can be a missionary wherever you are in your workplace. You can be that evangelistic voice in your workplace, in your family. This Christmas, may you begin to pray again that your family, all of them get saved from all their idols. There are many idols. Some people look like Christians on the outside, but they're not Christians on the inside. Amen. They might look like there's a nice religion on the outside, a veneer of Christianity. But when you scratch a little bit deeper, you realize that they believe in crystals. They believe in this. They believe in this stuff that this angel they can pray to and call upon this and read these cards. They do all of these weird things, add-ons to Christianity that takes them away completely from Christ. Amen? There's many idols in many forms of Christianity. You and I serve Christ and Him crucified. Amen? We believe that's the greatest knowledge that we carry as the church. Listen to this. A pneumatology changed from a creedal formula to a personal experience. Missionary endeavor surged forward. Certain other factors of missiology, missiological importance were linked to the pioneer's experience of the Holy Spirit. Firstly, there was the resurgence of the gifts of the Spirit, particularly healings and exorcisms. Now, what is exorcism? Casting our demons, simple. We've seen it in our church. Are we going to see more healings in 2024? Are we going to see God heal people in this Christmas season? If someone is sick, lay hands upon them, bring out the oil, anoint them with the oil, call for the elders of the church, as James says, you as a mature Christian, go out and do these things amongst your family members. Call them together. If someone's sick in the house, let's pray. We believe in for miracles. Amen. This is what happened in the early days of the assemblies of God. I'm painting you a picture of the light that came to the assemblies of God. The light was switched on. They became saved. They became set free. They became filled with the Holy Spirit. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. How many of you long still for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this Christmas season? How many of you long for the real experience, not just looking at the baby in the manger? 
looking what the baby became, the son, the lamb that went to the cross. And from the cross, he went to the grave. And there he was raised to life on the third day. This lamb has become the lion of Judah. And he's roaring from the heavens over the church. And he's interceding for the church. And he's saying, I'm coming back for a victorious church. I'm coming back for his bride without spot or blemish. And that's why I believe God is cleaning up the church. The true apostolic message will return to the church in these days. The apostle and the prophet will come together again, even though there's competition between them at this very stage, because the prophet believes that the apostle wants to control him, and the apostle believes that the prophet is too much of a loose cannon, and so he needs some controlling. So they pull each other back and forth upon on their necks, amen. But we need the church to come together as a whole picture, and the picture is not about apostles, not about prophets, not about evangelists, not about pastors, not about teachers, because Jesus is the apostle, Jesus is the prophet, Jesus is the pastor, Jesus is the teacher, Jesus is the evangelist. That's why Hebrews says we don't go to the prophets anymore, we listen to Jesus now, because if the prophet doesn't hear the Spirit of God, he brings nothing but rubbish, not Jesus. Ek het my wit skoene aan vandag. Trap on my up in neck. He's under my feet. Amen. I need to get to my message sometime today. I was in Riversdal geweest. I had a bit of Afrikaans gepreek. Daar so in die westelike provincie. So I'm back now in the English church again. Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Talking about the light. Now you know where we're going with this message. Because it's the light of Christmas. Let's read from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, you and I are going to do a little bit of a word study today. Are you with me? Are you, are you needing some revelation on this? I got some revelation, and I, I started even doing the pictograms from the Hebrew language. I said, Lord, why am I drawing pictures on my notes now? Okay, go for it, Julia. So the Hebrew word for light also equals the, the root words. There's a child root word, and then there's an adult one. But the child root word for this one, we speak about the word or, which is A-W-R, which means light. Now, this word light in the Hebrew doesn't only relate to light, but it also relates to a box. See this box here? That box. So when you think of light, think of boxes. Keep it in your back of your mind. We're going to come back to that. The word light closely related to the word box, or. Could the child root word is the parent, and this is the parent root word, is defined the AR without the W in the middle. Now, when you take a picture of this in the pictogram of the Hebrew language, the first one, the A, is a man's face, a head. It's like a side picture, side profile. Have you seen that one in the Hebrew? Then you've got the Y in the middle, and then you've got the ox head on the side. So the three pictures form the word or here, or the word light. Now we're going to unpack this a little bit for you this morning. Are you with me? So this word is like this. The Aleph is a picture of an ox, and an ox is to lead, and the concrete of it is an ox, and the abstract is to show strength. Amen. And so when we bring this picture together, we go to the strength that is the man's face, and the man's face is the following. The action is to attach, to concrete it down, and to increase. Amen. So we come to these pictures together, and it forms this word all, which is the light that has come to the world. Now, I want to give you a picture. When you begin to pack up a house, when you begin to bring your belongings together, this box will be empty at first. But as you take the things from one place in the house, you begin to gather all of these things together, and you begin to take it to the box, and you begin to pack it in. Is it right? You begin to put it into order. You begin to put things into this box, and then you make another box, and you make another box. Now, if we look at this picture in Genesis, what was in the beginning? Waters cover the earth. There was darkness. Isn't it amazing that he spoke light before the sun was created? He spoke light before the sun was created. Do you hear me this morning? He's speaking a different kind of light. 
Amen. So when he speaks of this light, when we look at this, the, the light, what do we read in, in, in John chapter 1? We read of the light that has come into the world. The light has been given from above to bring order to the chaos of the darkness in the world. This is what Genesis picture is about. He spoke, let there be light. When he said that, the word box comes to mind, the word light comes to mind, that everything needs to be put into order. So everything is packed into the box. God has now spoken order. When he said, let there be light, he said, let there be order upon the earth. Let God's reign come into this earth. Let life be established upon this earth. Because without light, there is no life. And so this idea of putting something down into the box is the idea of God saying, let there be light. And he speaks it. And what was hovering over the water? The breath of God. The Spirit of God. And so breath is spoken out. And this breath brings light, brings order to the chaos because it was formlessness. And the light brings the order now to the darkness. Amen. And we're going to come to the exciting part just now. You need light to see in the darkness. When you come into a room, you can fall over anything. When you're without Christ, you fall for many things. When you don't see with the light that God has given, you can't see the traps of the enemy because you get caught up in them. I believe that in this Christmas season, we need to switch the light back on, which is Christ in the home, Christ in my personal life, Christ in my family life, Christ in my business dealings, Christ in everything that I do. When you switch the light on, the room begins to light up. God will even begin to show you what the enemy is trying to do. Because when you switch the light on, how many of you play Donker Kamerki? Huh? Blind man's bluff. I don't know what they call it in English. Is there an English word for it? Dark room. Direct translation from the Hebrew. Picture of a dark room. Okay. So when you played this, everybody's hiding in corners and spaces, and people are breaking things. Ask my in-laws. The kids broke cupboard doors down because the one cousin decided he's going to dive over and grab the cupboard door like Spider-Man, and he broke the top cupboard door off, came down with a door in his hand. And we're like, what is going on? And he switched the light on. You see the guy sitting with the cupboard door. I was trying to get away from the guy that was feeling in the dark where the people are hiding. And this is what happens when the light is switched off. There is chaos. I don't want to ask you this morning by the Spirit of the Lord that you will switch the light on again in your life, that you may get rid of the chaos, the destruction that the enemy, the enemy, anything that is done in the dark, the enemy can use. Anything that is in secret in your life, the enemy can use. Anything you're hiding from the people in that care about you in your life, the enemy can use. Anything that is not open in the light, the enemy can use. Your mind is the battlefield. Between, where you saw? Between your ears, there's the battlefield right here. What you feed your mind with will cultivate a harvest that will come out in your life. Either it's going to bring life or it's going to bring destruction. Switch on the light this Christmas season. Switch on the light. Come read the Bible again in your house. Put on the Christmas music that speaks about Christ, not just little drummer boy. Amen. Speak about Jesus in your house. Teach your kids what it's about. Teach your grandchildren. If their parents don't want to teach them, take your grandchild by the arm and say, come and sit on Opie's lap here. Come and sit on Nanny's lap here. Let's talk about the Christmas story. My boy, Michael, do you know what Christmas is about? Oh, yes, it's about the presents, Granny. What have you bought me? 5,000 Rand present. <laughs> hey? Have you seen the kids? The eyes light up when they walk in. Woo, Christmas morning. Woo, what's under that? The big one's mine. Woo, they shake it. Check what's in it. They go scallop the night before. Shake on the gifts. Checking what's in every gift. Huh? But see... When you begin to teach the real meaning of Christmas, they will appreciate the gifts. They will understand what it's about. They will understand we don't just give because we have extra money in this. Email. We don't just give because we feel like it's a good idea. We give because we've received. We give because we have Christ. We give because at the end of the day, God says it's better to give, more blessed to give than to receive. When we give, we think of the sacrifice that was made for us. Jesus that has come to this world, the light that came from the darkness. Amen. And oh, switched on the darkness. The light that came from heaven into the darkness, bringing 
new light, bringing order to a world that is in chaos. Amen. Hmm. Got so many notes here. Let's look what happened in Genesis here. When order came to chaos, there's a couple of things that happened in the book of Genesis here. Darkness was separated from light. Waters above was separated from waters below. Land separated from water. Animals and plants were told to multiply within their categories or boxes. Amen. All this begins with the introduction of light. Do you see that God cleaned up in Genesis? It was like a big cleanup from heaven. When he said, let there be light, all of this order came into place. He separated certain things. He said, let the light and the darkness be separated day and night. Let there be waters above and waters below. Let us separate the land from the waters. And let the animals and the plants told and told to multiply according to their categories. Amen. You see, the order that God spoke in wasn't only just for light to come into darkness, but order over the whole of creation. God did a cleanup session. He said, this house is out of order. Let's put it in different boxes. Let's reorder this according to the kingdom of God. That's why we pray in the Lord's prayer. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As the light is in heaven, let the light shine on the earth. Let order come back upon the earth. Let that light be spoken of again over Christmas time now and say, let's switch on the light in this place. Let's see what's happening. Let's get the dust and the cobwebs out of the corners. Let's clean before the family members arrive from overseas. Amen. Let's quickly polish and spit and polish everything. Is the hair in place? Is it on a borsal? Do I look okay this morning? Amen. You see, because that's what God did. He said, let me reorder the chaos that's there and let me bring heaven's order down to the earth. Let everything be separated into their categories. The way that God operates is in order. How many of you believe that the world is out of order? How many of you believe there's chaos in every sphere of government around the earth. Have you heard the conversations about Israel and Palestine? Just go really, listen for days about that, and you'll hear this opinion and that opinion, and this one was blasted away, this one, and that one was blasted away, that one. Do you know there's a video out now that, that, that spoke about over 200, over 200 Muslim Palestinians that had a dream in the same time frame, overnight about who Jesus is, over 200 Muslims came to salvation, not through a spoken word by man, but Jesus himself, the light. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The life is light. Over 200 of them right now came to salvation because Jesus came to them like to Paul on the road to Damascus and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, Jesus coming to the Muslims in the Palestinian camp. He says, I want every nation to come to salvation. Not only the Jew, but also the Gentile. Amen. Also the Muslim. Are you praying for the Muslim brothers and sisters? Don't join them. Pray for them. Amen. Over 200 had a dream at a very similar time. You can go find it on YouTube. And they saw who Jesus is. And they came to salvation. And the church in Palestine is saying, come in. We're underground, but we're surviving here. We're coming together as a community, and they're looking after each other. Praise the Lord, man. This is what happens when the light comes on. This is what happens when the gospel is preached to every nation. This is the heart of God that every person of color, creed, language, tribe, whatever they are, God wants everybody saved under one name, the name of Jesus. This is the light that brings order because there's chaos in the Middle East. And God says, I will show you that my heart is for the Jew, but it's also for the Gentile. My heart is for the Jew, but it's also for the Muslim. My heart is for the Jew, but it's also for the Palestinian. So when you see people, don't start arguing about who's Jewish and who's not Jewish enough. I mean, I find these Christians that go and look for Jewish roots in their background. Because it's going to make them more Christian. Because Jesus was a Jew. Let me tell you, Jesus' father is not a Jew.
He was not conceived by human seed, but by heavenly seed, by the Holy Spirit. So if you want to go find Jewish roots in your background so that you can feel better about your Christianity, be my guest. Put on the little cuppy, put on the prayer shawl, put on everything you want to put on because those things are speaking about the real Jesus that we serve today. Those things are talking about the reality of Christ. Those are shadows speaking about who Christ really is. He is the covering. Amen. He is the meeting place. He is the presence of God. And when you speak about Jesus and you come into the light, all of these shadows become a reality in your life. You don't have to keep the festivals anymore because the festivals have been fulfilled in Christ. Amen. And therefore we serve the Christ of the festival, not the festival. We have confused people in the kingdom. Does God have a plan for Israel? Yes, He does. Is the plan still standing today? Yes, it does. Will God save many Jews? Yes, He will. Will God save other nations around them as well? Yes, He will. Amen. So we need to carry the gospel message with clarity. Don't become political in your Christianity. Am I speaking to the right people? Where did that come from? It's a cleanup. When the light really comes on, You love everybody. When Jesus is fully in your heart, you love everybody the same that Jesus loves them. Love is at the root of Christianity because God is love. 1 John. Let us go read in John chapter 1, the book of beginnings in the New Testament. New Testament. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, the Jews, and his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, To them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, Jewish or non-Jewish, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. You see, even right there, it talks to this concept that's happening in the Middle East right now. You and I look at the scripture and it says that everything was created through Christ. What did God create with? When he spoke there, he said, the light. Let the light come first. Let Christ come into this world. Let everything be created now through this light, which is Christ. Amen. Let His image be impressed upon the earth. Let His image be shown in all of creation. Let it be shown in the church. Let the church manifest the image of Jesus, the light that has come on. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Jesus Himself, first Genesis starts with in the beginning. Now, John starts with the same words, in the beginning. Jesus was there from the beginning. Jesus was not a rescue plan for the earth. Jesus was always the plan. Before the foundations of the earth, the lamb was already slain for you and me. God knew that he had to save the earth through his son, Jesus Christ. God didn't suddenly wake up one day and say, the earth, huh? I need to make a plan. Maybe I should send my son. Any of your angels want to go? Okay, no, no. Let me send my son. It didn't happen like that. God's plan was always to save all mankind through this one name, the name of Jesus, his one and only begotten son, that all who believe in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. 
Do you believe in the name of Jesus? Are you convinced, convicted, converted this morning by the name of Jesus? Don't switch off in church. Don't sit and think about the lamb that you're going to chow this afternoon. Don't think about the vegetables in the oven. Don't think about the burger. Don't think about the rutis. Don't think about the brayani. Don't think about the pancakes. Don't think about all that lacquer stuff in the back here. Think about Jesus. I feel like we should stay in church until everybody has decided to follow Jesus with their whole heart. Stop playing games in the kingdom of God. Stop just coming to church Sunday after Sunday. Come on, kids, get out, get out. We're late. Everybody run into church. And they're at the back, especially this side. Amen. Run into church. And they're in the back. Worship is already done. 20 minutes late. Hey, mom, dad, one thing my father-in-law hates is being late. He's always early. You're never going to find him late. <laughs> Come with an expectation. Bring your family. Get up earlier. Pray together. Do something. Put the music loud in the lounge so that they all can wake up to joy to the world. And even if you have to sing out of tune, get them out of bed. Maybe that's the way you should do it. If you can, can't sing properly, just sing loud. Just by, by the way, by the way, it's amazing when the congregation worships like that, isn't it? When the worship team goes quiet and the whole congregation still, joy to the world. Everyone, nobody's looking around, they're just worshiping. We're here for Jesus. Sing to your heart's content. Get with the program. Get the order right. And I believe this word order is coming over and over again this morning. Listen to what it says in John chapter 8 verse 12. This is one of the I am statements. In John, there are seven I am statements that Jesus made. This is one of them. The second one says this. What does it say? I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Isn't it beautiful? John chapter 8 verse 12. Now, if we take these words, light and darkness, it's the same words that were used. That's the Greek words now, but it's the same words that were used in Genesis. Amen? The A-W-R, the man's face, the Y, and the ox head. You can see it in pictures this morning. Your family said to you before, must I draw you a picture? <laughs> the Hebrew language draws you a picture. If you don't understand the words, you can go look at the pictures and say, ah, oh, man's head, Y, and... Uh, ox head. And so you can go study those. Go look at them. They'll enlighten you. They'll lift you up. They'll teach you deeper things of the Word of God. But these words, the light, phos, P-H-O-S, is the same word as the light that was in Genesis there. I am the light. I am the light. Jesus is claiming He's the light. Look at me. Don't look for any other light. Do you know that what He's saying is Coming into this world is the light. I am the only sp source of spiritual light that will bring life. Write this down somewhere. Jesus is the only source of spiritual light that will bring life. He's saying every other light is not the light. Every other version of the light is not the light. Every other dis thing that's been distorted that calls himself the light, they are not the light. I am the light. Full stop. I am the light of the world. He that follows me, he that believes in me, he that says he will come after that light, what will happen to that person? He will walk, not, no longer will he be in the darkness. He will not walk in darkness anymore. This is talking about your salvation. When you receive Jesus, the light came on. Boom. Light came on in your mind, your spirit, everything from the spirit. There was a light that shone. The Holy Spirit came. Poof. Born again from the Spirit. Poof, light came on. All the darkness is expelled out of your life. Everything comes into order. Your marriage comes into order. Your business comes into order. Your social life comes into order. Everything falls into order. Your thoughts come into order because of the light that you've received in Christ. Isn't that amazing how this works? This topic is so vast, but as we look at this, you came out of a place of chaos into a place of order. How many of you know God doesn't work with balance? 
You know that the world is really focused on balance right now? They want to bring balance. They want to say, let's balance it out. Let's think of all the feelings that are involved here. Let's think of all the parties that are involved here. Let's not hurt their feelings. You know, sometimes the truth will offend, and most of the time the truth will offend. But us that carry this light and this love of Christ, when we bring the truth over, it is the love of God that we're sharing with people. It's because you love someone so much that you don't want to see them go to hell. That's why you share that gospel message with them, so that they can have a better life, that the light can come on in them. When they read that book of Pastor Devils, they're going to see, the light comes on. Suddenly there's a light that comes on. How many areas in your life is still in darkness? How many areas are you still holding back from God? Are there some areas that you haven't surrendered to Him yet? That's the Holy Spirit knocking this morning. Is the light on in every room of your heart? Have you given over every room of your heart to Christ? Is the light on? Is there order? If there's chaos, it's not God. If there's order, this is God. The Father Himself Many, may we all walk in the Father's light as our Messiah Jesus demonstrated and bring his order to it. The light of the world. John chapter 8 and 9 speaks about this light. Matthew 15 speaks about us becoming, or 5, it speaks about us becoming the light. Matthew 5 speaks about us becoming the light and the salt. So first God spoke it over creation, the light which is Christ. Then in John, God comes again. And the light comes into the world, which is Jesus, born upon this earth. And light comes on, and people can find salvation in that name. And then he says, now I'm leaving the earth, but I'm not leaving it without light. Where is he leaving the light? The church. Jess, it's a good thing my shoes are big. I didn't go in there. <laughs> I'm just joking. So my parents used to say always when you yawn. She had a hand in front of her mouth. Don't worry. <laughs> Your parents are at the back here as well. <laughs> Good to see you, Philip. <laughs> Amen. But where's the light now? Jess, when you go out, when you make food parcels, when people receive that food parcel, there's light that comes with it. There's a message that comes with it. There's life that comes with it. Jared, when you speak to your, your friends about Jesus, the light comes on. Suddenly, they didn't think about it. They didn't think, hey, Jared, I don't know you evangelist, man. Yeah, yeah, I go to church every Sunday. I sit next to a cute girl there and... Now I've got some interest there, but, uh, but I do come to church for Jesus as well, amen, and, and, and then people's, the light begin, when Cody and Amy come together as a powerhouse, uh, power couple, amen, and they begin to minister to people through the creativity, and suddenly you say, ooh, I, I think I should share this with you when you're doing that tattoo on that person's butt cheek, you know, <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, I just had a revelation, <laughs> Amen. Let's say already blink on boer. Amen. <laughs> Have you ever thought about it? How many people are captive under your needle? They can't do anything. They're not going to move. In case you do zzz, zzz, zzz. Oops, sorry. <laughs> it's like a hairdresser when they say oops. <laughs> you know, behind you. What happened now? Cut my last bit of hair off. Eh? Have you thought about how many people are captive in that place? It's like, you know, they're under that needle and you, you go like, yes, you know, how's it going? No, no, have you have conversations with your clients? Okay, good. So it's like a doctor, you know, go to the doctor, everything, yes, doctor, no, doctor, okay, doctor. But Google says, and the doctor says, get out. Amen. But the thing is, people are under that place. They can receive a word. And you've got a prophetic thing over your life. And you need to see these prophetic pictures that God is giving you. Is God giving you pictures? Does he give you pictures? I know you paint, I know you do tattoos, and, but when you pray about things, when you pray for people, get a picture for the person as well, besides the one you're doing on their body, amen, and God will begin to speak to you, as you begin to speak into their life, you're going to see light come on, you're going to see, even, even those people that don't want Christian tattoos, or Christian value to it, they might even have demons on them right now, but God can deliver them from that, amen, God doesn't work like that, God doesn't go like, oh, this guy's too far gone, he's already got a skeleton on this one, he's already got a demon on the other one, That person might be possessed and they might be oppressed, 
But when you begin to speak the light, Kevin, when you go out on the streets and you begin to speak that light, so the light comes on and it will go beyond the tattoo, it will go beyond the conversation you're having, it will go deep into the spirit of the person and they'll suddenly feel the need to go to church when they leave the tattoo parlor. They'll go, yes, I've come out of a tattoo parlor, but I feel like I should go to church now. Amen. Receive that word? Amen. As you see those pictures that God gives you for people, begin to speak them. And here we see, he says, I am the light. I am the light of the world. Ye that follow after me will never walk in darkness again. There's a unique divine identity and a purpose that God wants to speak over you this morning. The light must come on over your family. The light must come on over your life again. The darkness must be expelled. Maybe some of you have been struggling with sicknesses in your family for years. Maybe some of you are under oppression. Maybe some of you are struggling with depression. I believe this morning, Justin, that song was prophetic. Come here quickly, Justin. Sorry that I'm calling you up, but the light has come on. There's order this morning. God's establishing order. I love you. They begin order, I say. Amen. You know this, this song that Justin wrote, I believe is a prophetic song. When we sang it, I believe in the spirit that many people that are struggling with anxiety, you see what the words of that song is? Things that come against your mind, darkness sometimes, you don't feel like getting up in the morning, you don't feel like going on in life, things happen with you. Praise God you through that season. This is a, tes- this is a testimony. I know Justin for many years. But he's an anointed songwriter, and I believe this song has spoken over people's lives already. Maybe you're sitting here this morning, you're saying, I'm that person caught up in a dark place. I struggle with lots of anxiety. I struggle with things that hold me back. I'm fearful. I believe this morning that God has already released the word over our congregation through that song. I believe it says there. You need to lift up your faith one more time. It's a new season for you and your family, Justin. That song was like a stepping stone. It's a new season of more songs coming, more creativity for you and Zanin. Is Zanin there somewhere? She's at a party. Okay, cool. With Morgan. With Morgan, little one. That's cool. Amen. We love the family. And I want to pray a prayer over this family this morning. And everyone that is standing for your family in your life, maybe you're struggling with anxiety, maybe you're struggling with depression, maybe salvation needs to come into your family. The Lord will lift you out of that place. And God did bring your little daughter into your life like a light. God sent her in. You know, I've seen it in families where a child can bring new things into the family. Through a child, God can can say, hey, I want to get my child to church. Hey, Justin? I'm coming with my child, though. And I'll stick around, and then I'll stick around, and I'll start writing songs again, get back into the worship team again, and then things begin to happen. I can talk like this because I love him. He knows I love him. We're going to pray. Where are you sitting? You're trusting God for a breakthrough in anxiety, mental disorders, mental things come against you. Your mind is your biggest battlefield. It's a powerful thing, eh? You're fighting these things. And God wants to lift up that, that heaviness over you this morning. Let's pray together as we stand with Justin, as he stands with us. Father, even as we sang that song this morning, I see over so many people, Darkness lifting up now in Jesus' mighty name. Heaviness, a cloud, anxiety, go in the mighty name of Jesus. Out in Jesus' mighty name. Depression lift in the mighty name of Jesus. Every addiction to every tablet to everything that keeps you bound in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that helps you cope completely in Jesus' mighty name. I pray right now that there will be a freedom like we can only see in Christ, a freedom that is never found in anything else but Jesus. Lord, I pray this morning for the light to come on in everybody's mind this morning. Everyone struggling, everyone going through a dark place, everyone that has lost a family member that is struggling with depression, struggling with anxiety, struggling with thoughts of suicide, spirit of suicide. 
I come against you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and I bind you, and I cast you out, and I say, get out of their life in Jesus' mighty name. And I say, be free now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you this morning that even deliverance is done this morning because you love us because you care for us, because you have mercy over us and grace over us. Lord, even my brother uh, Justin this morning, even as I lay my hands on him this morning, Father, I thank you for a new freedom, a new freedom, a new clarity, a new revelation of Jesus, a new step, a new anointing. Father, even as the anointing comes over him this morning strongly, as it increases again over his life more and more, Father, that there would be such a clarity of songwriting and a message for a generation that is struggling in emotions and drowning with the message that's coming strong from social media and people around them. Father, I pray this morning that there be no more condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus but a freedom that says, I am loved. I am loved. I am healed. I am delivered. I am blessed. I am a son. I am a daughter of the Most High God. He loves me with an everlasting love. He restores my soul. He's the lover of my soul. He's the lover of sinners. He's the restorer of the saints. He's the healer. He's Jehovah Rapha. And his healing balm is being poured out over this congregation this morning. As the light comes in, the darkness must flee. As the light comes in this morning, the darkness must flee out of every corner, of every mind, of every dispensation, over every person, over every position over every place of stronghold, every stronghold, we pull it down with the weapons that are not carnal, but are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds, mindsets, in the mighty name of Jesus this morning, come down. We bring it to the obedience of Christ. In the spirit right now, we bring it to the obedience of Christ. Every mindset and the light comes on and the life of Christ comes in. And in Jesus' name, you're going to feel, Justin, like a new man. Even today, there's something new happening in your spirit. Even today, God is setting up for great things. Even other people are going to ask you to write songs for them. Even as you begin to write for others, you're going to see there's going to ch ch chains are going to fall off them. Scales are going to come off their eyes. They're going to find freedom as you begin to write freedom songs, songs of deliverance, songs of salvation, songs that break chains, Songs that carry the anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Woo. I feel like switching. The lights have come on. Most of you cared so deeply for someone that it hits you deep in your heart. Don't just come to church. Be the church. Matthew 5, 14, be the light. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. When you go out this morning, Enjoy the food with your family, but remember that family member you need to pray for. Pastor Moira, we were out at Blue Horizon Bay yesterday, closing solace. Breaks my heart. People have lost kids at the age of 14, 20s, 30s. Parents shouldn't bury the kids, but it happens. And it breaks God's heart to see families suffer. Even Pastor Moira have left a dear nephew that passed away recently after Ryan's death, after your brother-in-law's death. We face many, many obstacles on this earth. It's fragile. 
We are fragile beings. Belinda? But we have the light. We have hope. We have a message that we carry of hope. Don't put a bucket over the light. This December, go and hug someone, pray for them, buy them something, a meal or something, get into their house. Don't just talk about those people that are struggling. Go and help them. Out of this message, there's three practical things. Look to Jesus. Number one. Number two, do the good deeds. In other words, out of the place of faith, not dead works. And lastly, may all the glory come to God. Because that scripture in Matthew 5 says, when they see your good deeds, they will glorify the Father in heaven. The church is the expression of love. Go tell someone in the church this morning that you love them. Find someone that you know that's struggling through some stuff. Even if you just pray for them, you don't have to be there everything for them. It's just this thing to say I'm available to help someone. We all have things we're facing. We're all broken in some way. But the light is on, man. Jesus has been sent. We carry that light. It's the life. It's Jesus, John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let us not neglect one another in the church. Amen. Love God. Love people. Church people and the unsaved people. God bless you. Let's pray together. Let's stand together as a church as we pray. Thank you, Lord, for your light, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that you sent Jesus as the light of the world. Jesus, you declared it, I am the light of the world. He that follows after me will never walk in darkness again. Never walk in darkness. There's a promise for you this morning. If you follow Jesus, you will never walk in darkness again. And you will begin to reflect that light to others around you. Father, I pray for each one standing here this morning, over this congregation, each one that is struggling in the dark, struggling by themselves, struggling with thoughts, struggling with the life behind the scenes that they're not sharing with anybody. Father, I pray for a freedom to come over this congregation this morning, a corporate anointing that we will carry the light out of this place that we will become the light, that we won't just come to church, but become the church. Lord, that we will not just speak about Jesus, but that we will carry all that Christ represents through the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray this morning for a fresh baptism this morning over this congregation, that we will go out of this place with a fire in our spirit that will say, I've been healed this morning, I've been touched this morning, I've been set free this morning, and by that same power, I will begin to speak it over my neighbors, over my brother, over my uncles, over my parents, over my children, over my grandchildren, over my great-grandchildren. I will speak light, and I will speak the life of Christ. I will declare that this is a season where you begin to speak over your family and the light will come on this Christmas. Begin to believe God for a miracle and a breakthrough like never before. God is a God of the impossible. Doesn't matter where your family is at right now. Doesn't matter where your life is as a single person in this congregation. God will send the right person at the right time. It will be like the light will come on. You will see Jesus all over him or her. And God will begin to make a way where there seems to be no way. Those that are lonely and desperate. Those that are crying out under anxiety and depression. Those that are too ashamed to admit that they've been struggling under depression. May God set you free this morning and heal heal you and deliver you and bring you to a place of wholeness through His love, through His compassion, through His grace this morning. Lord, I thank you for the grace of God. 
is sufficient for me to live every day. When I walk out of this place, I leave behind that which the enemy has spoken over me, and I step into the light. And I say, thank you for your word, Lord, that is light. Thank you for your word, Lord, that is life. And this morning, I speak this word over this congregation, and I thank you, Lord, that you say, I am the light. I am the light. I've come into your life. The light has come on now, and the darkness must move in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people say, amen and amen. God bless you. Enjoy your Sunday together with your family and friends.